You can hug a character again in a Disney park. Paying guests are now arriving at the Galactic Star Cruiser. Are reviews better or worse? We've got rumors of a surprising return to California Adventure, and there are some strange things happening with the reservation calendar. We're going to talk about all of that next on Fresh Pitch. Hi guys, David here with Fresh Bake. We've got an update for you on what's happening around, well, Paris actually. We're gonna to go to Disneyland Paris where something really exciting is happening. Guests are hugging characters again. It seems like a small thing, but it's not. In the category of things that make the park feel normal again, being able to hug a character is right up there at the top of the list. And at Disneyland Paris, there's no more social distancing when it comes to meeting characters. Well, actually I would guess no more social distancing at all. But news of this has, has, has gone around the world very quickly. Now, the lead here, obviously, is that you can hug characters again. But the question is for us, for viewers of this channel, is will we be able to do this soon at a Disney park here in the States? Hard to say, but I think one thing worth noting in that discussion is that this is not entirely up to Disney. There's no social distancing right now at a Disney park. Not on rides, not in a restaurant, not in a gift shop, not even on the Disneyland trams. But... There is still social distancing with character meet and greets. So that tells us that it's not strictly an issue with Disney. It is not strictly their decision. My guess is, is that this is an issue with the Disneyland unions, with the character unions, specifically with the actors. Uh, and they can set their own, they can negotiate their own terms for social distancing, mask wearing, that kind of thing. That's why you still see Disney cast members wearing masks in the parks. But we're not without hope. Disney CFO Christine McCarthy, who was on a conference call with Morgan Stanley, said as much. She said, Character meet and greets will be back soon. That's, those are her words. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really, she didn't elaborate on that at all. She didn't say what kind of character meets or how soon, but it's on the top of their mind right now, getting things back to normal with regard to character meet and greets. I would say watch Princess Fantasy Fair. That is where we're going to see the next progression on character meet and greets. They're, it's going under a refurb right now. They're renovating the Royal Theater, but that does have a connection to the Royal Hall across the way because the Royal Theater was where you're meeting princesses. Those princesses used to meet in Royal Hall. So if you can't meet the princesses at Royal Theater, well, right now they're meeting in sort of the, the common area of Princess Fanny's Fair in some very weird, curious locations. It is, it's working, but it's not probably the ideal way that they want to meet characters. I think it won't be long before you'll be able to see princesses back in the Royal Hall. Meanwhile, on the subject of things returning, I've heard a rumor. Rumor has it that the red car trolley and the Newsboys are coming back soon. The thought was that we may never see the red car trolley or the Newsboys ever again because where you park <laughs> the red car trolley is literally in, Avenger in the Avengers Campus headquarters building where you see Black Widow and, and all those guys. They park the red car trolley in that building. And naturally, it would be very bad show <laughs> to see a red car trolley you know, go into Avengers Campus and go into that building and then come back out on a regular basis. That would be very bad show. I can't think of anything more... A po more, more diametrically opposed, more opposite than seeing a Depression-era red car trolley in a very modern, state-of-the-art superhero campus. But what I'm hearing is that Disney is going to pull the red car trolley out from backstage before the park opens, and they're going to park it in front of the animation building, right where we saw it parked when we were in the, uh, you, can go to, you can go to DCA but, and just shop, uh, you know, during the shutdown. They had it parked out there in front in front of the animation building. They're gonna park it there first thing in the morning or before the park opens, then run it back and forth between that, that spot and uh, its Buena Vista spot. And then with a stop in between, obviously the usual stop at Carthay Circle. And that's about as good a compromise as I could have asked for to bring back the red car trolley. Something that I, I really do feel like Buena Vista Street and that part of DCA really needs. It's necessary for that overall, you know, vintage Hollywood experience. And of course, once you bring back the trolley, now you've opened up the, pop, the opportunity to bring back the Newsboys, which is an also very good show, a uh, well-attended show that pops up right there at Carthay Circle. Super fun, lots of energy. It's, it's what makes DCA, what what's makes Buena Vista Street, Buena Vista Street, that and the five and dime. By the way, if they're willing to bring back the red car trolley, I would be willing to bet that they're going to bring back the car, uh, the five and dime vehicle that they actually come, you know, down to Carthay Circle in. I wonder where they parked that though. Did they park that backstage at uh, DCA or I mean at Avengers Campus also? If so, that may be that may be a little more difficult because you can't bring that out on stage 
before the park opens. That's something that has to come out. Matter of fact, now that I remember it, it comes out from that gate to the left of Tower of Terror from uh, Mission Breakout as you face it. That would be a bad show, I think. So hold, hold your breath on, <laughs> hold your breath on uh, or don't hold your breath on that, on that vehicle coming back now that I think about it as I'm riffing here. But anyway, slowly but surely, Disney has really been surprising me on this. I am low-key impressed that they have done what they, they brought back the bootstrappers on, on weekends too. They brought back the Jambalaya Jazz Band, and now the rumor is they're bringing back the Newsboys. Three shows that I thought, you know, when the, when the parks reopened, that I thought we would never see again, considering their recent history. They have been, it's an assault on live entertainment in the parks. I can, I can run a laundry list of all the things that they have shut down or stopped doing in the parks without anything replacing it. Things like, I don't know, the Jedi Training Academy or the live music at Tomorrowland. Uh, or the Hook and Ladder Company, just to name a few. Now, it is just a rumor, so I'll believe it when I actually see it in the parks where I hear it from Disney. But then again, I've also got no reason not to believe this particular rumor. I do feel pretty good about this. Let's talk next about the Galactic Star Cruiser. Early reports from the media event were pretty good, actually. Better than that. They were pretty great, I have to say. Even if they were coming from comped media, you could see and you could hear in their reports that they were pretty happy, pretty excited that the experience was was fun, a fun thing to do. Disney did deliver a good product at the Galactic Star Cruiser. But a lot of folks in the peanut gallery were saying, let's wait until guests who have paid their way in, let's hear what they have to say. And as it turns out, they're saying pretty much the same thing. But they are adding one little caveat. A lot of fun. Disney has created a unique and exceptional product. They had a great time. It's not worth $6,000 or $5,000, depending on your arrangement. As far as reviews go that were outside of the media event, I looked at Tom Corliss from WW News Today. He did not attend the media event, but he did go, and he paid his own way. He paid cash for that experience. Now, let me preface <laughs> Tom's uh, comments or his review by saying first that Tom and Disney don't get along, not even a little. He's been very critical of Disney at times. Disney has been very critical of Tom at times. So it's no understatement to say that I don't think that Tom would ever feel compelled to sugarcoat his review. He, he doesn't do that when it comes to Disney. What did he say? He said he had a great time. He seemed to be very impressed by the whole experience. Well, 90% impressed. He did have some, some complaints that, were, that seemed justified when I was watching his review. Uh, they, were, they were legit complaints. But overall, I, I would say that he absolutely enjoyed his time at the Galactic Star Cruiser. And so I have to say, if Tom, <laughs> if Tom enjoyed this experience then it must be pretty good. That conversation always comes down to, yeah, but is it worth it? And I've said, personally, when asked about this, worth is a relative term. What's worth to me may not be worth to you. So I can only say if it's worth it to me, but I haven't been. I haven't gone, so I'm not able to say that. And it's also why I'm not really able to do a, any kind of you know, specific review. I can only observe what other folks are saying about it. But, <laughs> again, Tom had no problem answering that question. He, he said, no, it's not worth it. Not even if you have the money. His opinion was strictly based on, is this experience worth X dollars? It's not, he said. It is exceptional. It is unique. It's not $6,000. This story isn't written, though. I expect, I expect things to change quite a bit at the Galactic Star Cruiser over the next year or two. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And I'm not sure what that means yet. I'm, I'm, fine. I'm formalizing some thoughts on what I think, what I predict will wind up happening because there are some questions, some important questions that need to be answered uh, about the future of this, of the Galactic Star Cruiser that, that, needs, that needs further discussion. But that's a conversation for another day. I want to talk to you about the reservation system. Something weird is happening with the reservation system. Now, normally when I talk about this, I'm talking about dream keys or believe keys and the difficulty that those have with making reservation for the past months, few months or so. It's been very difficult to make a reservation. But look at this calendar. As of this recording, almost an entire two-week stretch is booked. 12 out of 14 days. Now, what's the big deal, you might ask? We've seen this before. That's, that's nothing. No big deal. What? Well, that's the single-day ticket. <laughs> that's the single-day ticket calendar. I can't ever remember it looking like this. Not ever. And I, I can't figure what it means. What's stranger, here's the dream key calendar. Weekends are still bad, like they almost always are. But there are actually more net days available on the Dream Key than there are for single day tickets. Now, I can't honestly figure it. Now, this does seem to be sort of an isolated situation 
Uh, small sample, we haven't seen this in the long term. Maybe there's just something happening right now that's triggering this. But it does change the narrative a little bit. Right now, we can't say as Magic Key holders that Disney is trying to stick it to the Magic Key holders in order for them to sell more single-day and multi-day tickets. They're sold out. Well, not completely, but way more than they've ever been. And maybe it also changes the narrative about who is filling up the parks. That is, for a stretch, single-day tickets are sold out, but reservations for Dream Keys and Belief Keys are not. So if we were to go to the park next week during that window, could we say that the bulk of those crowds are single-day ticket holders instead of Magic Key holders because they're the ones who have sold out? I'm going to need to be in the parks, I think, next week. <laughs> I got to make a trip. I love finding excuses to go to Disneyland, and this is one of those. I just want to know. I got, I got to know if it's busy. Like, if it's really busy on, you know, Monday through Thursday or Friday next week, if it's really busy during that time, and there are still reservations available for, for, for Magic Keys, does that mean that Disney has oversold or is the populace a majority single-day ticket holders? Or at least, at least we could say that there are more single-day tickets in there than there were before. Or, which I, this seems strange, or <laughs> are they selling fewer? Are they allowing, are they making available fewer single-day tickets or multi-day tickets? That answers the first narrative question. Uh, is Disney, you know, preferring, giving preference to single days over Magic Keys? Very interesting development. Now, I will say this. Also on that conference call uh, with, with Christine McCarthy, with Morgan Stanley, when she talked about character meet and greets coming back, she did also say parks are not still, are still not running at full capacity. As for now, that'll catch us up on what's new and newsworthy going on at the Disneyland Resort. Thank you guys very much for watching. Follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked, on Twitter at FreshBakedDizzy, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at FreshBakedDizzy. There's also our website, FreshBakedDizzy.com. And if you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Fresh Baked.